Hey guys and welcome back to another engine build episode In today's video we're gonna be doing the pistons and the connecting rods and we're gonna put them in the engine So you can see I'm not using the air pistons anymore uh, Whenever I bought them they did not sell me the right kit I'm not, Obviously I'm not gonna mention who it was uh, but it's okay, I got a full set of OEM bolts, which is perfect now, I'm sure the specs are perfect, everything stored perfectly, and more importantly, you can see whenever I turn the crank, there is no binding, no, you can't hear anything, there is no scratching, everything smooth, and all the way through all the rotations, so I'm really happy with that. Also, re put the, the gasket maker, the anaerobic sealer as well instead of using the Permatex one I use the OEM Volvo tube one as well it really feels good to finally be close to the end we're gonna be putting everything inside the cylinders um, now you're gonna see me assemble the pistons and everything but do keep in mind that it's very important to loop the inside of each cylinder before we put everything uh, since you do not want too much dry uh, dry action in between the piston rings and the cylinder you want it to be a bit looped up and as you can see four of them are unbolted and loosened up and I kept one tied to show you how you're supposed to take it off so the trick is I'm not sure how it's called in English I think it's called a mechanical pin you see here on each of them there's a small mechanical pin so whenever you loosen the the RP studs here uh, the bolt sorry um, the two the two sides won't come out you're gonna have to hit it uh, or there's other ways there's some tools as well uh, the cheapest way is to use a hammer do not hit this do not hit the connecting rod do not hit the sides do not hit the inside you're gonna loosen these but keep obviously keep some threads uh, bolted and then you're gonna slightly tap on both of them and so one or two hits one or two hits and you're gonna see it's gonna start loosening up and then it's gonna completely come out don't go crazy because it's easy to damage the, the parts so here I'm gonna show you already loosened these with the ratchet so you're gonna loosen them up you're gonna give it some space so just just for the example I'm gonna show you so you're not gonna completely take them out you're gonna put them back and put a couple threads in you see now it's tight you're gonna do the same here you're gonna give it some room as well you're gonna just hold it that way and then the important part is that you, know, you do not want to hit this, you want to hit the bolts and very, very gently as well. And you're going to see it's going to come out. I'm going to try and do it that way. And voila, that's it. Now this is loose and you can take it out. Now that this is done, um, the next steps I usually do is install this one of the C clips in here. Like I told you in the last video, if your oil uh, oil piston ring gaps here overlap onto the piston pin, you're gonna have to install the connecting rod before you put the the, um, the piston rings. Uh, in my case, it's not it's not the case. You can see the piston rings is fully free. There's nothing overlapping on it, but I'm still gonna put the connecting rod because it's easier to handle and then install directly. So I always install while one C clip. I don't know if you can see it here. Yeah, there we go. So you can see it here inside. I installed one of the C clip. And you can see here there's a small overhang. You do not want the C clip to be on that. You want it to be in the groove all the way around, but none of the none of the C clip actually hanging in the small groove here on the bottom. Now time to clean everything. I'm simply gonna use some brake cleaner 
nothing crazy wipe the surface here the insides and the insides as well of the connecting rods and then uh, once this is done I'll clean that and the piston pin and then I'll loop the the inside side that goes onto the crankshaft too, so I can install it in the engine. And you can see these are all brand new parts, yet there's still some dirt and oils just from handling the parts even though your hands are clean and everything so it's very it's a very important step to do i'm gonna do that for all five kits now now that everything is clean i also install the connecting rod bearings and i'm gonna show you a very important step that you should not forget so let's take this one for example right okay so first of all, you want to make sure it's flush on both sides. So the, since the connecting rod is made in a U, you do not want one of them sticking more to that side or to the other. You want to make sure they're flat, as flat as possible with the connecting rod surface. So if you look closely, none of them are sticking out. I press them out with my nail or just a finger, something to make them flat without scratching everything. Also, the second step that's very important here if you look, um, I don't know if I can zoom in more. You want it to be as centered as possible. Contrary to the main bearings, which they have a notch in them, and in the crankshaft case and in the block, there's also a notch in them. That way there's only one way to put them uh, and they're gonna be as centered as possible. In the connecting rod, uh, whenever it comes to the connecting rod's bearings, you can see there is no notch. So it's just a half moon. And you wanna make sure it's uh, as centered as possible in that way too. So you're gonna compare the gap here to the gap that's here. If you need to move it, you just move it with your finger here and there. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but uh, the more center it is, the better it's gonna uh, level itself out. And you're gonna do the very same thing with that one here as well considering that the next step is uh, to actually take the time and install the connecting rods with the pistons and uh, loop the piston pin and uh, etc i'm not gonna record or do a time lapse because i'm not gonna do them here uh, i'm gonna assemble them in another room and i want to make sure i have a towel so i wipe the extra assembly lube so it doesn't spill everywhere so uh, I'll catch you guys uh, once everything's installed. So when you're using a ring compressor to install the piston, it's extremely important to tap, to slightly tap on the outer rim here. So you make sure it's properly seated around the cylinder. And then that way, whenever the cylinder pistons are coming down, they won't get stuck on the outside and they won't chip because they're extremely fragile. Uh, even though it's an easy step, it's something you want to take your time with. So slight taps all around. You can even double check it's seated properly. And then with the butt of the hammer, just slightly tap away. Every other couple taps, I just make sure it's still seated properly. So one important thing is whenever you're hitting the, the piston, you do not want it to be too harsh because the half half of the bearing, the top bearing that's uh, that's on the connecting rod could come loose and fall. So it's very important to not hit too hard and also make sure your crankshaft is positioned properly. 
so we're not squeezing it or scratching the crankshaft um, polished uh, surface as well. Whenever we're doing that, you can either turn your engine sideways and then align it, or just go underneath it and make sure everything's safe, obviously, and then hit it slowly, make sure it's perfectly aligned, and then put the other half of it. So before putting the connecting rod, it's very important that you loop the surface here, and then you wanna loop the other surface, the other bearing, and some on the threads as well. So it's very important to put back the connecting rod bottom half the proper way it was whenever we took first took them off. And then we you can see I marked them here and the marking is over here as well. So you do that. We're gonna hand find them slowly and gradually both of them so it doesn't squeeze in an uneven way. case it's gonna be a one stage 55 foot, pound, foot pounds of torque so I'm just putting them tight enough and evenly on both sides and then one stage one stage of 55 foot pounds of torque done there you go and voila so that's the same process for all five of them and just take your time since it's a very important step it's easy it's very rewarding to see them in the cylinder as well but take your time also a very important step is to clean the inside of the cylinder just wipe it with a brake cleaner and then quickly put um, assembly loop all around the inside as well and as deep as possible as you can um, that way that will help for for the piston rings not to be bare metal on bare metal so it doesn't scratch anything and just so there's some film of uh, oil in between them don't put too much as well because it's all gonna drip on the floor and on your feet so just take that into mind everything is finally assembled you can see it turns extremely smoothly even with all five of them barely any force no binding no grinding just normal normal up and down movement for the all five pistons i'm really happy with the result honestly they look amazing and then all the next steps are really a breeze to be honest installing the oil pan some seals oil pickup head cams extremely easy timing belt and stuff like that and then the engine will go into the car and then turbo and exhaust manifold time piping intercooler etc all fun stuff that's pretty easy and fast to do so the engine startup is really starting to to come closer and closer so i'm really eager to see uh, what the result will look like if you guys stayed till now I really appreciate it and uh, thank you for all the likes and comments on the last couple of videos. If you have any questions again for the same thing, feel free to comment down below or DM me. And then please consider subscribing and liking, it really helps out and it motivates me as well to help you guys. So for now, I'll see you in the, in the next video. Thank you guys and bye bye.